Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. This is the Tom O'Brien Show. If you heard me say we had Steve Rhodes on, you need to get your hearing checked because I actually said Tim Ord. We have Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Now, Tim comes on the Tom O'Brien Show every Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, if you check TFNN.com, you can go over here to the services page, and we have uh, two of his webinars archived on here. Uh, again, these are fantastic. I have to sit here and moderate them uh, whenever they're on, and I learn uh, so much. And if you want to check out the past interviews uh, that Tom O'Brien has had with Tim Ord, you can go to our YouTube page, uh, YouTube channel, and uh, check that out. Just type in Tim Ord TFNN and then hit subscribe and like while you were there. Uh, again, this is Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle.com. Go give him a check out after the interview. Tim, how are you doing? Good, good. Uh, thanks for having me on again. Absolutely. We are, uh, well, I'm excited to have you on. This is going to be great. And I know some people in the den are looking forward uh, to your analysis of what we got going on right now. So what are we looking at today, Tim? All right. Uh, so let's take a look at chart one. Yep. And uh, we were talking last, I think, actually we talked on Monday. Uh, Tom and I were talking about uh, the uh, Zwag breath thrust indicator. And it had to reach... Uh, I forgot what the number was, plus or point six zero by Wednesday. Well, it never did that. Uh, but this that's a ten day kind of a short term trading technique to indicate bullish outcomes in the market. Uh, this indicator is the uh, you know the top window in this chart is the NYSE McCollin off square, and it's a little bit longer time frame. There's also a summation type oscillator that measures even the bigger trend. But this uh, trend usually uh, picks out uh, intermediate term lows. And uh, anyhow, the red lines are times when this indicator hits below minus 300, which we did on April 16th, and needs to rally to plus 300 in, in a month. So it needs to get to plus 300 by May 16th. Uh, so Right, we're in the process of rallying. Will we get to plus 300? Don't know yet. But uh, the red lines on the chart are the times when this indicator reached below minus 300. And the blue lines are the times that reach plus 300 within 30 days. If you can see, this chart goes back to about mid-2018. And you can see the red and blue lines come at all intermediate term lows. So you need a sign of weakness. After the sign of weakness, you need a sign of strength. And so so on April 16th, we got the sign of weakness. Now the market has to show a sign of strength. And I think this indicator has a really good chance of kicking in. We'll have to wait and see and follow it as it goes forward. But as triggered right now, uh, we did April 16th, we did hit minus 300. So let's, let's see if, this, if, if we do develop to plus 300 by uh, May 6th, uh, mid-May, then uh, we'll probably, uh, uh, well, that's a bullish move. We'll put it this way. That opens the door, probably a rally all the way to year end. Not every week's going to be an up week, but does suggest we'll make higher highs and higher lows as we're going forward. So we'll keep an eye on that. That's another indicator uh, that uh, anyhow we're watching. Let's flip to chart two. Yep. Give me one second here. All right, we have chart two coming over right now. We're good to go. All right, chart two, this is a seminal indicator. So there's a lot of things to look at. You look at you know signs of weakness, signs of strength, and also you kind of want to gauge what the public thinks about the market. And anyhow, this is the, uh, the bottom window is the 21-day average of the equity put call ratio readings. And next window up is the five-day average of the equ uh, equity put call ratio readings. And the middle window is just the equity put call ratio readings. So when everybody's bearish, everybody's buying puts. So, so anyhow, the best situation is if the market's rally and you actually want people to be bearish during that rally. Uh, Joe Granville said years ago, the market has to, to, to climb a wall of worry for a bull market to occur. And so I'm kind of watching this indicator, see where we are. But anyhow, the bottom one of the 21 day average was basically a whole month of trading. It's, it's, a, it's 0.69. You know, the, the real line needs to be right around 0.7. And 0.69, in my opinion, is close enough. So there is worry out there on, on a monthly time frame. So we're, we're, we're in a setup 
in my opinion, to start a bull move from here, according to the equity put call ratio readings, because people are kind of nervous uh, on on the market right now, and that's a good thing to drive the market higher. Uh, so Simit is pretty good. We have a, a selling climax, according to the Mahal and Osclear, on April 16th. Uh, so we're getting things that line up uh, for a, a bull move to, uh, to occur. Uh, so let's take a look at the bigger time frame. And that'd be chart three. Yes, sir. All right, we got it up right now. All right. We talked about the McCollin Oscillator, uh, which is, uh, you know, kind of a 30 day, um, uh, oh, I guess a 30 day sign of strength type thing from minus 300 to plus 300. This indicator is the summation index. Now, that's a bigger time frame. So this kind of looks out over the next year, not the next several months, you know, four, five, six months, like the sum, or like the oscillator does. The summation index looks out for a year, maybe in two years. And over the, in the at the bottom of uh, 2023, uh, this chart goes back to 2007, but you know, at the bottom of 2023, it, it kicked in. And actually that uh, last October bottom also had a McCall and Oscillator. Actually, give a definition of a bull move using McCall and Oscillator. You need a selling climax again on the Oscillator, or oh, excuse me, on the summation index. You need a selling climax. And for a selling climax to happen on the summation index, you need a reading below minus 700. And for a sign of strength, then you need a plus 1,000. And this indicator has to do it in two months. So on October 27th, we had a minus 700. And on December 27th, actually two months to the day, you got a plus 1,000. So that opened the door of 2024. That is probably going to be an up year. And so far, that's that's what's occurring. So I don't right. think any major top is going to form this year because the summation index opened the door for a bull market for at least a year. And it could be a couple of years. So we'll have to wait and see. And the summation, that's the reason why I think uh, this is a summation index. And I think the the reason why the McCall and Oscar, which is a uh, that um, page one or yep. graph one, is going to uh, kick in because the summation did kicked in, suggests the whole year is going to be up. So, so I'm saying this whole year actually looks pretty good, and I, I think there's at least another you know, 10%, 15% to go before this year's out. And what we just had, this pullback from the, uh, uh, you know, kind of an April high down to a April bottom mm-hmm. is just a, a timeout in an uptrend. Uh, so this, this is the reason why I think um, this is going to be a, a bullish year. So you really should, if you get a chance to buy the pullbacks in the market, this is the time to do it. I hear the music. Yeah, yeah. Tim, stay right there. We'll be right back with this. Welcome back, folks. We have been with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. That is Ord-Oracle.com. We've been talking about some indicators that suggest this is going to be a relatively bullish year uh, going forward. So, Tim, we were on uh, chart three before it went to break. Right. Let's go to chart four. Yes, I think okay, that's a good this, idea. This looks at the monthly. I showed this chart before, and it kind of just uh, drag it forward to, to see what it's doing. But anyhow, you know, the bottom window is the SPX VIX ratio, and um, and the top or the middle window is the uh, monthly SPX. So this is a monthly chart. First thing, uh, the bottom chart usually the uh, this is a monthly time frame, so it's, it's, it looks at the bigger picture. But uh, on a monthly time frame. Usually the VIX starts going up before the market tops out. And I want to point that out. Going in the top of 2020, that was that COVID decline. That, that actually uh, SPX VIX ratio was making lower highs as the VIX was, or as the SPX was making higher highs. Same thing happened going into the uh, 2021, late 2021, 2020, early 2020 high. The SPX was making higher highs. This ratio is making lower highs. And currently, we're going in, uh, there's no top here, but uh, here, over the last several months, the uh, SP was making higher highs. 
this ratio made higher, uh, also made higher highs. So there's no, on a monthly time frame, there's no divergence yet. But for the S&Ps make a new high here going forward above the April high, and this ratio makes a lower high, then we'll have to regauge the market. But that hasn't happened yet, so we're not going to worry about it. So, but yeah, I also want to point out, usually there's a consolidation when the uh, trading range, this is the council charting on the uh, uh, monthly SPX, but when half of the trading range is above the upper Bollinger Band, closes above the upper Bollinger Band, then normally the next month is a, uh, a down month, or at least a consolidation month. Mm. And I pointed out the times in the past when that happened with blue circles. You can, uh, yeah. going into the uh, high of, of 2020, half the trade range is above the mid Bollinger Band. Uh, same thing, there was a, a jolt, looks like uh, probably August, September of 2020. It closed halfway above the mid Bollinger Band. Same thing happened later that year, and it looks like about November. And back in March, uh, you can see I got a circle there in blue of this year. We closed halfway above the uh, mid Bollinger Band, and sure enough, April was a down month. Uh, so, uh, anyhow, also got uh, the uh, Fibonacci stuff on here too, uh-huh. taking the uh, March 2020 low, taking it to the high of it looks like a probably December of 2021. The market only retraced 50 percent of that move. A lot of times, it can only retrace 50% of the move. That marks the halfway point of the move up. And also, I think there was a head and shoulders bottom there that we had a sign of strength through the neckline. And now, if you do all the numbers, you come out with 5,700, which is about 12% higher than where we are right now. And that's projection of the Fibonacci stuff and the head and shoulders bottom. So uh, the, big, the monthly charts look bullish, and there's no divergence so far on any of the monthly charts. So uh, to me, the, you know, the April was just a timeout and an uptrend. So I and see. now uh, I bought a little bit too quick. But uh, anyhow, I'm, I'm thinking May is going to see new highs, probably June, July, August. Uh, I think the trend's pretty. September could see some trouble, but that's too far out. But right now I think the market's actually a pretty good buy area. So that's on a summation again this year looks like a really good year uh we got plenty to go to the upside uh next year i don't know so right but by and this 5700 we'll is actually we'll have an idea so, yeah, yes and and uh, for everyone who's just kind of started listening like maybe in the past month because we have a bunch of new subscribers on youtube um this target was actually I, I believe roughly similar to what you were calling like in january or february as well so it's interesting to see this still kind of like being in line um, with with yeah. these kind of monthly charts, so yeah, there's nothing to change yet, and we'll get uh, you know there's indicators out there on the monthly time frames that the month the the first uh, weakness will show up on the monthly charts. Okay, a lot of times you think would be on the short term charts, yeah. if they don't. They show up on the monthly charts, then they kind of wiggle down to the the daily charts. So uh, interesting. But anyhow, we were expecting a, a down month in April. We did get it. I, I think April will hit new highs, uh, so we'll have to wait and see how that works out four months in. So let's go to chart five. Yeah. I think uh, chart five is actually, we're going to flip to the gold market for the next couple, three charts. I forgot how many charts it was. But this is the short term chart. The top window is a GDX, and I have a dotted uh, trend line across what I'm thinking is a neckline of a head and shoulders bottom where the October of 2022 was uh, the head. And we're up against the neckline right now. And the market over the last three weeks, as far as GX is concerned, really hadn't done anything. It just sat there, right smack yes. on the trend line. Either it's, it's building energy to bust through that trend line or it's building negative energy to bust down. But normally, if, if you're on the trend line, it's not backing away, it's eating supply. So all the, the sell orders hitting this market right now are being absorbed by the buy. Uh, there's another reason why I think we're building energy. Every trading range is actually building energy to build an impulse wave. There's 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 a trading range to build an impulse wave, and 
funny how I'm, I'm thinking we're eating we're eating through this neckline. The reason why there's there's a couple of different reasons, but you know, to go to the bottom window. This is the 50-day average of the up-down volume for GDX. So, in a, in a nutshell, 50 days, that's basically two and a half months of data. Uh, in a nutshell, if it's above zero, which is all the blue area on the market, you're in an uptrend. If it's below zero, you're in a downtrend. And we've been in an uptrend since, uh, well, looks like the first part of April, eyeballing it there. It's not designed to catch the highs and lows. It's designed to catch the trend. So right now, the market over the last three weeks virtually has done nothing. It's gone sideways. But this indicator has actually gone, gained strength. In other words, the up volume is exceeding the down volume. So that implies there's buying pressure coming into the market. So this is actually, the market is actually gaining strength without GDX not moving. This suggests we're going to uh, probably have an impulse wave start here pretty quick, where it starts this week, next week, not sure when it's going to start. But this is not a sign of weakness here that's happening. I hear the music. Okay, again. yeah, stay right so. there, because I want to ask you uh, I want to ask you something about it touching the neckline uh, when we get back. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. All right, welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. We are with uh, Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Before we went to the break, we're looking at this GDX uh, chart here. Now, Tim, I know one of the things I'm curious about and I'm noticing here, when it touches this neckline, even with this moving average above zero, it seems like, we, now, and I know this isn't like super granular, this is on like a monthly, and so I'm sure a shorter term or, or a chart that goes through uh, more terms would be a little bit better looking at this, but it seems when it touches the neckline with the moving average above zero, we get, we get a pullback. Is that... Something I'm misreading, or, or kind of what would you look at regarding this? Or what would you say um, to that, I guess? Well, uh, I'm not sure what you're asking. To me, if this was going to have a pull, so we're up against that trend line, the dotted trend line, yep. the market's traded sideways. If that market was going to turn back down from that trend line, that bottom window indicator would be going down, not up. I see. Is that what? Because I'm, I'm looking at when they're touching so the trend be line. closer to zero right now. If it's close to zero, because that's showing weakness. This measures the up-down volume. So when it's gaining strength and, it, and the GDX is going sideways, the up-down volume is actually gaining strength here. So this rally is going to continue. I see. I see. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for clearing that up. So yeah, I'm, I don't. But if it if it was here's another way to look at it. So if 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 the indicator says that uh, it looks like about say th or the GDX is at thirty three thirty four, and this indicator is round zero at the bottom, then you don't know. I see. So since it's down, so much above the zero line, that is indicating obviously it's it, it's getting strength. Right. I That's see. Because yeah, if it's below zero at that trend line, then you. It's going to reject it if you're above it. It's, especially you're above it quite a bit here. You know, right. when I print this chart. We're plus thirteen. We're never, we're never, not even close to zero. Okay. So, um, that's a good indication uh, that you're, you're you're eating through that supply right there at that I trend see. line. So it's actually let's go look at the bigger trend. So yeah, uh, that's the short term right trend. So now let's go to chart six. And uh, this is the weekly GDX um, cumulative up-down volume. Uh, okay, so the bottom window is the weekly GDX GLD ratio. Next window up is the cumulative up-down volume on a weekly time frame. And the next window up from that is the uh, cumulative advanced decline for GDX. And the top one was GDX. And this indicator is a pretty good trending indicator. Uh, the blue lines are times when this indicator closed above, when in, when all three indicators closed above the mid-Bollinger Band. The sell signals come when the indicators close below the mid-Bollinger Band. And right now, uh, GDX is still below its uh, Bollinger Band, but it kind of the GDX GLD ratio, which is the bottom window, uh, is still below the mid-Bollinger Band. So I got that circle, or not a circle, but a square in red. Uh, but the other two indicators are above 
the mid Bollinger Band. And let's go to chart seven real quick. All right, we are up right now for seven. All right, seven. That's the same chart, but it's all blown up. Can you see where we are? And as you, as the bottom window, the weekly GDX yearly ratio is still below mid Bollinger Band. And but the up down volume and advanced client indicators are both above the lower Bollinger Band. So there's a good chance that this rally uh, is going to continue. It's a little bit whippy. The monthlies, which I don't have shown, but both of them are still below the mid Bollinger Band. But the monthlies are the last to turn up because they just move slower than the weeklies, and the weeklies move slower than the dailies. But the weeklies appear to be turning up. And if you go back to chart six, okay. Uh, if you go back, most of the time, you you do get a one to whipsaws, but a lot of times, if you look at the 2019 low, kind of gave a double buy. But once it got above the mid Bollinger bands, it stayed there for the next year. So, and I got time frames between you know the sell signals and buy signals, and at a minimum they last a year, year and a half, and they can go as long as four years. The last time uh, this indicator gave a sell signal was back at the 2021 top and pretty much remained in a sell signal until uh, recently. Uh, and now, you know, we're back above the, the mid Bollinger band. Will we hold this time? I'm thinking we will because we've got a lot of different indicators on the uh, daily time frames as the one we showed, uh, you know, chart five. They're showing still strength here. So I'm thinking. Finally, we're going to turn up, and a lot of these gold stocks that have been setting dormant for years. Mm-hmm. We're going to start responding because uh, the bigger trends are now turning up. The monthlies haven't turned up. It's the reason why I didn't show that chart uh, because it'll take another month, if not two months, to turn the monthlies up. And the monthlies turn up, then you're, you know you're you're looking at multi years. But I think in, over the next year and a half, or even or, or longer, the gold stocks are going to start responding. And all the ones that are sitting around two, three, five, six, ten, twenty cents um, are are probably going to come in vogue again. Because uh, I'm thinking something big is starting to happen here. Actually, I think it all started back in 2016. But I'm thinking the small gold stocks are going to start to respond now because the the up down volume, advanced decline of GDX, all this stuff is starting to move fo- uh, forward on a multi month if not a multi-year uptrend uh so I, i'm thinking gold stock's been out kind of out of vogue for several for you know a long time yeah actually really since about 2012 yep and i think they're just starting to come into vogue right now so i'm thinking this this going to open the door for um some big gains on on some of these issues that have, haven't really had any uh i guess any activity for years because uh, once these indicators kind of turn up, uh, you know, the big, the generals start off first and the soldiers come out later. And I think some of these soldiers are going to start moving. I have uh, some I'm watching on the monthly charts and they're starting to pop above the mid Bollinger bands, the little dinky ones. So it could be a, a frenzy in a couple of years, uh, but it, it's starting off um, slow so far. But I think as time goes forward, they're really going to speed up. So. Um, anyhow, so I, I wanted to show the, the blow up on this chart. So I'm thinking something big is starting to happen. Definitely. And Tom and I even talked about it last last fall. I think it's something big is starting. To, and it really hasn't, people haven't really started talking about it, which is good because when yes. they do start talking about it, it's usually late in the game. Yeah, yeah it's and, the, uh, the runs so, there. Yeah. So far, they haven't started talking about it. So. Well, and, and you know, working in the same offices tom the way i do he always gives me nice little insights kind of commentaries and stuff like that and one of the things that was interesting he was kind of musing about with me uh was that you know you have gold move up to these levels and they and they keep at a higher they sustain that higher level then you start seeing kind of the gold equities the gold miners start coming along and i I believe you've echoed that as well uh when when i've interviewed you on here which has been um you know it's nice and it it kind of opens up more things because now everyone you know, we want to focus on the tech and all these kind of big names and stuff like that. But, you know, where stuff really pops is those low, low value uh, gold miners, you know, and you, you can get insane, you know, percent movements up because of that, you know. Yeah, yeah, you can. 
So, so, Tim, was that the last of the charts you wanted to speak about? Yep, yeah, that, that's all I had, uh, those seven charts. Fantastic. Well, Tim, thank you so much for coming on with us. It was fantastic as always. Guys, right. that was Thanks. Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle. We'll be right back for a short segment.